Hi, today I'm going to be making a dew shield out of foam, sticky back, velcro and some scissors to cut it all up to the right length and everything. For my Richie Cretchen telescope I've got in the observatory, so I'm going to do a bit of an observatory update as well because that's been a while. So what's happened with the observatory, I did want to put a security bar across the front but I can't find that so I do need to dig that out and find it. But I've got a tiny solar panel running a light in there which seems to be working really well. I got that from Amazon, they're just really easily found on Amazon. I was a bit sceptical but it's working well so far. I may get a second one actually. The wire from the so little solar panels running through here and this is the light. Let's pop that on just to show you. So that, that's pretty pretty bright really. It does a reasonable job. So you might be wondering what's going on with the tartan blanket and this contraption on the pier. So what I'm doing is, I did start out with a dehumidifier in here to control the damp, but it was a cheap one. It wasn't really doing anything at all other than using power. So I bought this dog or cat pet warm uh, heated blanket that's kind of waterproof. You can set different settings on there. You can have it on a thermostat or a timer. I've got it on a low setting, plugged into here, which is running to where this shed originally was, because it did have power in, in the shed when it was originally over there. At the moment, I'm just running the power cable into the shed, across the lawn. No one cuts the lawn apart from me, so it's not, not a problem and it's not going to get done in the winter anyway i'll just sort out the electrics in the spring but i want to get solar power sorted really as much as possible the uh the light the little light there's uh the start of the solar i want to get sorted so yeah the warm air will rise off here it's just very slightly warm to the touch but it's enough that the warm air will rise up keep the pmc computer for the Exos 2 mount nice and dry because that's got electronics in there on that getting damp in it and the warm air gets trapped underneath the blanket and as you can see there's no damp on the telescope or the mount it's nice and dry I don't know how well you can see that but I've replaced the RDF with a better sky surfer free and that's a really nice red dot finder. There's more adjustment on it, so I can actually line it up with the main telescope. Um, I, my, my cheaper one wasn't really doing that. It wasn't didn't have enough adjustment to actually line it up properly with the what I was seeing through the telescope. So it wasn't really fit for purpose, but this one seems fine. During imaging sessions, I was noticing looking down the tube, I could see the reflection in the primary that the secondary was getting pretty dewed up. So I'm going to hopefully make a dew shield if I set up this GoPro somewhere so we can see what's going on. No, it's too short. Ah, what to do? Okay, that kind of backfired because the foam clearly wasn't long enough to go all the way around the circumference of the telescope. So I've got a plan B. I'm going to go and order some camping mat foam, which is going to be thicker, which will be better also. It'll also be longer, so it wraps all the way around. But in the meantime, I can't really use this telescope because the secondary just gets dewed up really quickly. So I'm going to switch it out for my Magres, which is a small ED refractor. Also, that will enable me to take longer exposures with the Altair Hypercam because with this telescope, it's a beast. It's got 1600 millimeters focal length, which is very hard going tracking wise on the mount. It's really hard to track at that focal length. So I can only really take very short exposures. I've not got guiding set up or anything like that at the moment. So with the Magres, I'm open to get a minute or two exposures with the hypercam and hopefully get some deep sky objects in a bit more detail instead of just the core of Orion, which I've managed so far with this beast. So that's the plan. What I'll do is I'll switch this out for the Magres and we'll, we'll do that now.
Okay, so we've switched to the Magres 72, the little 72mm ED refractor. Okay, it's time to attach the Hypercam. Now, with this camera and the Magres 72, it will give 2.2 arc seconds per pixel, which is just very mildly undersampling, but only barely. You, you kind of want it between one and two arc seconds per pixel. The scene's gonna be roughly two arc seconds on a poor night and one on a very good night. Okay, balancing's not easy with the Magres. It's um, it's quite back heavy with the spacer and the camera. Also, it's too light for the cat weight on the mount. Only a little bit, but with this mount, with it being belt driven, it has to be quite well balanced with the Exos 2 PMC8. I noticed that with the with the RC8, if you didn't have the balance perfectly right, it kind of grumbled. It made some noises that made it sound like it wasn't happy. So I really do need to sort out this balancing. If I make a dew shield for the front of this, I think that's gonna help. So I'll quickly knock one of those out now. It'd be really helpful if I had a dovetail bar that I could attach to this foot on the refractor so I could just move the whole thing forward, but I don't have one at the moment. This is why I'm struggling to balance it. It depends where I've got to have the focus, so once it's focused, if I've got to have it all the way out, then balance on declination is going to be an issue. If I rack that all the way out, see how much of a lever arm that is, and it's just going to drop like a lead balloon but if I have it all the way in it's a bit more gentle it's just slightly off then I can't go any more forward because I'm running out of grip now I've got the sky surfer free on board or the red dot finder it's balancing a bit better now it's not 100% but yeah that'll be good enough to begin with I'll get a dovetail for it if I use it a lot I just wanted to tell a little story about how I got my hands on this Magres 72 because I did own one of these about eight years ago and I sold it to a good friend of mine from the forum and until recently he was really, he's a, he's a kind of guy who keeps hold of his kit for a long time but he did eventually put it up for sale at a remarkably low price and I immediately tried to grab it back because I'm not because of the price mainly because I'd regretted selling it to him in the first place and I thought it'd be cool to get the same scope back. But unfortunately, I just missed out to a, a chap who unfortunately didn't do a very chivalrous thing and just bought it to sold, sell on for a really big profit. And he, I think he sold it on eBay for a lot more than what he bought it as soon as he bought it. So it was just a, a money-making thing for him. Anyway, my friend was really upset about it. I was upset for him. Um, Another chap from the forum who I've got permission to say his name. I did ask him at the time whether I could give him a shout out. Um, Davey T or Dave from Stargazers Lounge saw that I just missed out on the Magres 72 and said, oh, I've got one of those lying about. 
I'll, I'll let you have it for the same price. And I, I was blown away. I was like, I couldn't believe, <laughs> couldn't believe my luck. So I very happily accepted and he sent, sent it me pretty swiftly. Beautiful condition, McGrath 72. And I was really happy. And he spotted that I planned to do some, he watched some of my videos and saw that I planned to do a bit of imaging with it. And he goes, oh, I popped the 0.8 dedicated reducer in the, um, flat reducer in the post for nothing. It was really nice to see humanity striking back and a decent chap like Dave doing a really nice thing by a fellow astronomer. And I really appreciate that, that mate. It just goes to show that most of us are good and want to help each other. And it's only the odd person that lets, lets the team down. So thanks very much, Dave. Really appreciate that. Anyway, I think that's enough for now. I just need to get this under the stars and see how the Exos 2 behaves with the Altair Hypercam 294C and the Magres 72 and try and capture some images now of deep sky objects. Cool. Right. Catch you later.